Hey everybody, my name is Scott, and today we're going to solve the string compression problem on leak code. Here's the problem definition. We're given an array of characters. We need to compress it in place. Length after compression must always be smaller than or equal to the original array. Every element should be a character, not an int, of length 1. And we are modifying the array once again in place, which is important. We return the new length of the array. By new length of the array, they don't mean the length of the actual array because we're modifying this array in place, so we're not changing the actual length of the array. They want the length of the compressed elements. All right. Here's an input, A, A, B, B, C, 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 and it returns 6. And the reason it returns 6 is because this array will become A, 2, because there's two A's, B, 2, because there's two B's, and then C, 3, because there's three C's. A will just return 1, with, an a, with the array being A, and A followed by 12 B's, A, B, and then 1, 2. This is where things get a little tricky in the cases when the digits become more than one character. All right, so let's implement it. I'm going to knock out a edge case real quick. If the length is just 1, we're just going to turn 1. Simple as that. We don't need to compress it if it's just length 1. Previous is cars of 0. Cars of O. Cars of 0. I'm going to start count at 1 because we count the first character. And we're going to keep this insert index, which will start at 0. Insert index is basically how we're going to keep track of how we're going to rewrite this array in place. I'm going to start i at 1, less than cars length, increment i. Alright, so our case is going to be if cars of i does not equal previous. What are we going to do? What this means is we are going from seeing a certain character to seeing another kind of character. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write at cars of our insert, of our insert index to be equal to the previous character. That's just keeping that character in its place. We're writing to our insert index the character that we started this block out at. And then we're going to in increment the insert index because we've written. Whenever we write to the insert index, we want to increment the insert index so it stays pointing at the right value. Now, if count is greater than 1, this is where we have to put in numbers to display how many times that character occurred in that block. I'm going to set up count string is equal to just a string representation of the count. And we're going to loop through count string. And what do we need to do? We write to the insert index. Characters at insert index is And remember, when we write to the when we write to the insert index, we have to increment the insert index so it stays pointing at the right value. And then we just reset count to one to account for the character that we just saw that is not equal to our previous character. And what happens if we are still looking at the same character, then we just increment the counter. At the bottom of the loop, we update our previous character scene to be cars of i. So that should do it for the loop. Now when we get out of the loop, what do we need to do? Well, when we get out of the loop, that means we have just finished seeing a new block of characters and we need to process those similarly. So we write to the insert index, our previous character seen. Whenever we write to the insert index, we increment it. So it's still pointing at the right value. 
and we're just going to do the same thing here. If the block that we saw in more than one character, make the count string. And then just loop through count string, writing each of its digits. I'm so bad at spelling the word length. So we write to the insert index the digit that we're looking at. And when we write to the insert index, we increment it to make sure it's always pointing at the right value. And then down here at the bottom, we're going to return insert index because that is telling it how many values are actually left in this array. Oh no, we missed a semicolon. Somewhere. Somehow. Line 7. Expected a semicolon. It's there. forget a semicolon, we forgot an equals. So I've got a nice little messy test case, handles it nice and well. Submit the solution. Spoiler alert, I think it's going to be okay. It is. Alright, so that's how you solve this problem. Um, not a special algorithm or data structure thing going on, just uh, when you're compressing or doing things in place, a lot of times you're going to need some sort of pointer, like we used insert index here. That was really the crux of everything we were doing, is this is keeping track of where we need to write these values that we find. And then after that, it's just programmatic, right? Just programmatically figuring out how to loop through this thing and figure out how many of each thing you see and then writing those back into the array. That's it for this one. Hopefully you learned something, and we'll see you next time.